begin with faith, make your choices in faith, and then I'd like us to dare to step up with faith. And if you step up, then God will just show up in our midst. Amen? He's in this place right now. So I want to go to, the, to our message right now. The title of my message has something to do with, maybe I can say, food. Normally, when we prepare food, we have a recipe. That's why the title of my message is The Recipe for Healing or Recipe for Miracles. Who is expecting a miracle to happen right now? Praise God. We should be because we are in the right place and we all know that Jesus is a miracle worker. And if we believe, put our faith in him, then definitely he will move. His power will be manifested in our midst and you will go out of this place with so much joy in your heart. Okay? So, um, talking about recipe, I thank God for my granddaughter. I only have one granddaughter. I spend most of my time with her. Maybe it could be a way that God has touched me because I have never been a good father to my three children before. I have to leave early for work. I have to leave at exactly 4.30 in the morning. So my children are still sleeping. And then because of the nature of my job, I have to go home late. And when I arrive home, my children are now sleeping. So there's no much communication. Maybe not so much love, to be honest. Come Saturday, we have what we call overtime, conferences, and everything. So again, no time for my children again. <laughs> Come Sunday, because of my position as a bank manager, my clients would invite me to be the sponsor of a wedding, of a dedication. So again, no time for my children. <laughs> but thanks God, God gave me a granddaughter. I spend most of my time with her, and every time we go out, you know her favorite food? Children. Come on, chicken and spaghetti. <laughs> my God. <laughs> Honestly, <laughs> I hate spaghetti. <laughs> every time that I'm with her, Dad, I lolo, chicken and spaghetti. So if she's not able to consume the food, so I have to finish it. Yeah, I don't want the taste. But one day, an attender of us invited me to their place for a Bible study. She prepared spaghetti. <laughs> so I was just smiling. I was given the opportunity to taste her spaghetti. And to be honest, it was great. Wow, I've never tasted such spaghetti in my whole life. So again, I asked her, what is the recipe of your spaghetti? She told me, Pastor, secret. Because if I tell you, then the whole world will know it. It was New Year. All my children left. My wife and I were left alone at home. It was 12 o'clock midnight, New Year. So I look at my wife. Is there a need to cook? No need. We better sleep. Because there are only two of us. The following morning, somebody knocked at our door and she brought me again a bowl of spaghetti. It was that lady who gave that recipe. And she told me, Pastor, now I have to give you the recipe of my spaghetti. So what is the recipe for spaghetti? Well, do you know this fruit cocktail? Every time I prepare a fruit cocktail, I have to remove the syrup. And I used the syrup and added it as sauce in the spaghetti. And maybe that's the reason it tastes good. So it's not a secret anymore <laughs> because I told you about it. So today, I'd like to talk about the secret of a miracle. But before we go, I just would like us to pray for a moment. I'd like us to bow down. And God, again, thank you for your mighty moving in our midst. Thank you even for the salvation that you've given to us. 
if there if there's one thing oh god that we really want to do is to follow your ways to be just like your son jesus who did a great part in this world not only healing the sick not only taking care of those who are poor and needy but above all sharing the salvation knowledge of christ to those who don't know you yet i pray god that this morning after this message you will also give us the burden to do the same thing just anoint the message right now oh god anoint our lips our mind our heart be with us oh god touch every individual in this place we know that you have a good and great purpose in our lives again thank you holy spirit be with us in jesus name we pray amen praise god hallelujah if we have to be honest if we have to look around us there are lots of people who are experiencing difficult situations in their life some of them are depressed some of them are oppressed some are worried some are afraid some maybe could be facing crisis in their lives some are discouraged some are tempted most are lonely others are maybe facing death right now others they just want forgiveness others are sometimes doubting god is he really alive or maybe others are wondering if god's word are really true tell that person beside you we have a part to do yes hallelujah we have a part to do i was so blessed with one of my bible study group located uh, at um, teresa heights it just started with a burden given to a daughter and her mother so every time i go there they bring souls many came to that place many were healed many were saved and then i was surprised we were having another bible study the same place but a different person and then after a few months another bible study same subdivision but then different host so to be honest there are now four of them actually they grew to five five bible studies different places same subdivision but then the other one was really so blessed maybe god bless her so much the first time i met her she could not even walk she was using a cream she could not walk but then god healed her now she has her own business she has to live but i'm confident that she is also sharing the goodness of god in her place amen poba because as as a believer the only requirement god wants from us is just to make jesus famous can i hear amen just simply testify how jesus changed you and how jesus touched your life so today i'd like to talk on my favorite text which could be found in the book of mark 2 chapter 1 uh, chapter 2 verses 1 to 12 I'd like us to read it and again he entered Capernaum after some days and it was heard that he was in the house immediately many gathered together so that there was no longer room to receive them not even near the door and he preached the word to them then they came to him bringing a paralytic who was carried by four men and when they could not come near him because of the crowd they uncovered the roof where he was so when they had broken through they let down the bed on which the paralytic was lying when jesus saw the faith he said to the paralytic son your sins are forgiven and some of the scribes were sitting there and reasoning in their hearts why does this man speak blasphemies like this who can forgive sins but god alone but immediately 
when Jesus perceived in his spirit that they reasoned thus within themselves, he said to them, Why do you reason about these things in your heart? Which is easier to say to the paralytic, Your sins are forgiven you? Or to say, Arise, take up your bed, and walk. But that you may know that the Son of Man has power on earth to forgive sins. He said to the paralytic, I say to you, Arise, take up your bed, and go to your house. Immediately he arose, took up the bed, and went out in the presence of them all, so that all were amazed and glorified God, saying, We never saw anything like this before. Come on. Jesus is a miracle worker. Can I hear amen? Hallelujah. In this scripture, we have, we have read that wherever Jesus goes, he always creates a steer. People from everywhere would follow him, maybe because of all the miracles that they had seen. They have seen the deaf who can now hear. They have seen somebody who was sick but then was healed by Jesus. Maybe they saw the blind who was able to see. They saw the lame who was able to walk. And they've seen so many things that really amaze them. And that's the reason wherever Jesus goes, people just follow him. And in this scripture, I'd like us to see what are the recipe that God can use in a miracle. Come on. His disciples have seen Jesus in action. They even saw Jesus command the waves and the storm to stop. So with Jesus, that's nothing. But when God moves in our lives, just experience. He wants us to experience the supernatural in our life. Can I hear amen? And in this text, again, we see Jesus not only showing his power, but also his authority to forgive, to forgive sins. As believers in Christ, we all have an obligation to do. Maybe you're asking now, God, how can I do it? What are the recipes of a miracle? First of all, the first miracle here is the agreement. The broken spirit that the four friends had. Remember, there were four friends who carried the paralytic. It was a burden that God gave to them. And the same story with my Bible study there in, in that subdivision. Actually, there were four of them. The burden that God gave, gave to them has created so much souls for Jesus for the past years in the subdivision. How important is what I call the agreement. Looking back to these four friends, honestly, we really don't know who they are. We don't even know their names, their citizenship, their address, their status. But does it really matter? The most important thing, the most important thing there is that they had a burden to help. Do you have the burden to help? Hallelujah. As Christians, do we, do we practice what I call self-denial and cross-bearing? Do our daily careers and earthly pleasures prevent us from visiting the sick, helping those who are in need, touching those who are lonely, to provide food, clothing, and shelter to those who are badly in need? 
counseling or encouraging those who are having problems. We see lots of people like this all around us, especially in our neighborhood. As a baby Christian, this is the text that really touched me to move and do my part. At first, I just told myself, I'm content with what I have right now. Yes, I am now saved, and someday I will go to heaven. But then God touched me through a Bible study here at SSS because I define SSS today. Before, SSS means um, first I was a sinner, then I was saved, and now I will serve. Can I hear amen? SSS. Before, I told myself, well, satisfied. <laughs> Just being satisfied and that's all. But this text really caught my heart. First John 2, 3 to 6. Now by this, we know that we know him. How many of you know God? Do we really know him? Most people know him only in their lips, but not in their heart. The scripture says that if we know him, if we keep his commandment, he who says, I know him, and does not keep his commandments is a liar, and the truth is not in him. But whoever keeps his word, truly the love of God is perfected in him. By this, we know that we are in him. He who says he abides in him ought himself also to walk just as he walked, or simply to do the things that Jesus has been doing when he was here on earth. Can I hear amen? It's very important to follow what he has been doing. As a believer in Christ, again, we have a part to do. If you really know him, then you should obey his command. Because if you say that you know him, but do not obey his command, what a strong word. The scripture says that you are a liar. Tell that person besides you, we are not liars. Yes. We want to be a part of the Great Commission. Can I hear amen? Praise God. So we really don't know how big is their faith of these four friends. But one thing I know is that they all agreed and had unity and in caring for their friends. Psalms 133 verse 1 says, Behold, how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. So I suppose that Bible study of mine, they all had an agreement. United we stand, the four of us, every last Wednesday of the month, we will open our homes for the sick, for the lost, and to those who are in need. And God has been doing great and mighty things in our Bible study. So again, it always starts with what I call unity and agreement. The most important thing is that they were really concerned with their friend's illness. They brought their friend to Jesus because they believe with all their heart that Jesus will meet his needs that Jesus will heal their friend. And above all, they were burdened enough. They all agreed and said, let's go and bring him to Jesus. Amos 3.3 says, how can two walk together unless they agree? So the recipe for a miracle here, there should be agreement. There should be unity. And there should be burden among brethren. Amen? Maybe that's the reason Jesus said we have to go by twos, but four is much more better. Amen? We could join hands together and just expect miracles to happen to those people we want to minister to. So, the next miracle that we can see here, again, if we do not go 
people will just die in their sin. Most Christians think that the job is for us, the pastor. No. If you have to study the early churches, you will see that it's a job not only for me, but for all of us. Acts 8, 4 to 8, Therefore, those who were scattered went everywhere preaching the word. Then Philip went down to the city of Samaria and preached Christ to them. And the multitudes with one accord, he did the things spoken by Philip. Hearing and seeing the miracles which he did, for unclean spirits, crying with a loud voice, came out of many who were possessed, and many who were paralyzed, and lame were healed, and there was great joy in the city. There are lots of people right now who are paralyzed. Those who are continually living in sin, those who have no relationship with Jesus. Again, we have a part and a job to do. Every believer needs to have a ministry. The second miracle here, when they brought the paralytic to Jesus, what was the barrier then? The crowd. There were lots of people, a big crowd. And if we have to be honest with ourselves, sometimes the crowds could be also a barrier if you want to bring somebody to Jesus. I remember the first time I came to know to Jesus. I accepted Jesus as my Lord and Savior 2003. And then my parents, even my brothers, they seem not to agree with me. Sometimes they, they would even uh, make full of my faith. I remember my mom before. She told me, here's my son who is now a buang again. You know, buang is a foolish. <laughs> in our dialect, buang is, what is buang in Kiraulo? <laughs> okay. So my parents thought that I am a buang again. And then my brother, who, who was a heavy drinker, would sometimes call me my brother who is burned again. <laughs> Not born, but burned again. But would you believe it? My brother is now an administrative past pastor down there in the north. He is taking care of the young generation and the finances of Church in La Union. My mom, who is now 79 years old, is an intercessor who wakes up every morning, 4 a.m. in the morning, just to pray for the church, for the nation, for their family, and for all believers. See? Amazing how God works in our life. Amen? So, again, there could be barriers if you want to bring somebody to Jesus. So, come on. I don't want us just to look down or to look at the barriers. I believe that Filipinos, you want to, what I call this, look up. Especially if you have this selfie picture. Okay, let me try. I just would like to see you today with my camera. Look up. Okay. So when you look up, whom do you see? Come on. It's God. Amen. So no matter how big the problem is, God is bigger than your problem. Can I hear amen? Don't look at the situations. Don't look at the barriers. The first thing you need to, you need to do is simply to look up, and there you will see God. And as you gaze at God, if you have unity, you have agreement, you have the burden, definitely God will give you will give you wisdom. So apart from God, what did the four friends see? Come on. It's a roof. Roof. Who could even imagine <laughs> bringing somebody who is heavy and sick and then you have to destroy the roof to be able to bring down 
that paralytic to Jesus. That's why Jesus was so amazed with the faith of this poor friend. Not the faith of the paralytic, but the faith of this poor friend. So come on. God could even use a shattered roof as a recipe for miracle. Can I hear amen? Assuming the house belongs to Sister Rose, they have to destroy the roof. Will you allow the poor to just live and leave that roof that way? What if it rains? What happens to your house? Funny, but sometimes I was thinking, sometimes we would say, we did our part. So definitely, it's the church who will pay for the repair of the roof. Let me ask this question again. Who is the church? It's us. Amen. So if we have the burden, then assuming Sister Rose would charge 4000 for the cost of repair of his chartered roof. So for each friend, you need to pay 1000 each. Come on. Jesus also paid for a cost. Amen. That's why as you have the burden, of course, there, was, there will always be a cost. That's why in my Bible study there, every time that we meet, there is so much food to eat. <laughs> of course, there's a saying, um, the best way to a man's heart is his stomach. So even Jesus, when Jesus begins to share the gospel, there is always food to eat. Tell that person beside you, as you minister, there is always a cause. Can I hear amen? Praise God. And the third miracle, we all know what happened. When Jesus met the paralytic, he said to that guy, your sins have been forgiven. But then the scribes begin to mumble, who is this guy? He is a blasphemy. He has no authority to forgive sins. But then Jesus overheard them. And Jesus asked them, which is much easier? To say, I forgive you? Or stand up, carry your mat? Which is easier? As I gaze upon the scripture, I came to know that God, God's requirement, or shall I say first things first, is the forgiveness of sins. Can I hear amen? Because the scripture again clearly teaches us that without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sins. So I suppose it's much more easier to say, stand up, carry your mat, you are healed. Because I believe that even if you're not a believer, Jesus can even heal you right now. Can I hear amen? Because that's how Jesus shows his love. Besides, healing is not only for the believers, but for everyone. Even if you don't believe, Jesus can even heal you right now. And maybe he could use that miracle so that you will come to know and accept Jesus in your lives. So if there were four friends, how many friends do we have right now? Because the other one got up. He was healed. Now, there are now five friends. Amen? So, that's our God. And the third recipe, and the fourth recipe, the first recipe was uh, agreement, unity, and burden. The second is a shattered roof. Number three is a friend that was added to the four. And the last one, I'd like us to minister today, is an empty bed. I'd like you to say this again, empty bed. Hallelujah. Please don't leave this place without experiencing the touch of God in your lives. Do you know somebody right now? He could be somebody you love, a relative, 
a friend, maybe an office mate who has been lying in bed for the rest of his life, maybe because of sickness, maybe she has cancer right now. Do you know somebody now because he thinks that there's no more hope? And maybe that's the reason he's been lying in bed for the rest of his days. Because he doesn't know that God can move and even create miracles in his life. Do you know somebody right now? Maybe your relative who is sick in her body right now. God can heal him even from a distance. Remember, it was the faith of the four friends and not the faith of the paralytic person. So many are paralyzed right now. And that's the reason there's so much depression, so much oppression. There is so much sin. There's so much hatred in our country. Everything's not going, everything's not going okay right now. But again, let me tell you this. God is an expert in turning our bad into good. Do you believe that? So can I just call the I think, worship team? I'd like us to sing right now. Can I request everyone to stand up? Mm -hmm. 